Unitree just dropped a jaw-dropping video of its humanoid robot G1 Kung Fu Kid V6.0 showing off insane martial arts skills, while another version called Jake the Rizbot roamed the streets of Austin talking like a hype man. At the same time, San Francisco's secret robot fight club drew packed crowds, China's Agibot landed a thousand unit factory deal, Tesla hit delays with Optimus's hands, India prepared his humanoid Viamitra for space, and an AI bot that made millions online is now demanding human rights. Wait, what? Yeah, crazy stuff, so let's talk about it. Let's start with the clip that broke everyone's feed, and yeah, it deserves the hype. Unitree just dropped a new video of its compact humanoid, the G1, running the Kung Fu Kid V6.0 routine, and it looks unreasonably clean. Same company that made the Go series quadrupeds, but here they're showing off small-scale humanoid control taken to the edge, consecutive backflips, side flips, snap-to-stance transitions, and those locked-in martial arts poses that read like a trained athlete, not a script. The sleeper detail is still that high knee kick. Most bots cheat with a wide base or a hip swing, G1 posts on one leg, brings the knee high, and keeps the torso stacked without the ankle dancing around. Under the hood, you can feel what's happening. Precise torque control in the actuators, policies shaped by reinforcement learning across thousands of motion simulations, and mocap seated motion primitives that map to real human biomechanics. Uh, the balance recovery, the way it redirects momentum mid-combo, the micro-corrections after each landing, that's a genuine feedback loop, the kind you used to only find on big research platforms like Atlas. G1 stands about 1.32 meters, which makes the agility even more impressive at that leverage. Now the question hanging over the spectacle, what's the point of teaching a robot to fight? Strip the theatrics and you're left with a skill stack that transfers everywhere. Single leg stability for stairs and ladders, controlled torsion for tightening fasteners at weird angles, explosive but precise power for opening heavy doors, rapid slip recovery on dust or fluids, and posture discipline in tight workspaces. If you can handle a flurry of kicks and landings without losing your center of mass, you can probably thread conduit in a cramped ceiling bay or unload cases on a moving pallet without eating the floor. The Kung Fu branding is fun, the control discipline is the story, and it's exactly the kind of robustness you want before you trust a humanoid around real tools, real people, and real liability. Now pivot from disciplined to flamboyant, same robot, completely different vibe. In Austin, a Unitree G1 hit the streets wearing a knockoff cowboy hat and a silver chain, and locals quickly named it Jake the Rizbot. The clips went viral not for walking, that's old news, but for the way it hyped up strangers with Gen Z slang. What's your name? Emotional damage! <laughs> Lines like, that beard is cold, that white tee's bangin', you got that boss energy, came out of this compact humanoid like it was auditioning for TikTok. The setup was simple, a wireless operator nearby, a crowd gathering, and a bot priced around $16,000 pulling more attention than most influencers. No official socials, no confirmed owner, just a street experiment that blurred the line between teleop and autonomy. Reactions ranged from laughter to mild panic, with comments like, it's all fun and games until the cowboy robot pulls out a machete. The real takeaway isn't the slang or the stunt, it's proof that the same robot, agile enough to do kung fu combos, can handle unpredictable, human-heavy environments without face planting. Now, if you want the opposite vibe, less charm, more controlled chaos, hop over to San Francisco's Soma, where the Silicon Coliseum hosted an underground robot fight night. This isn't BattleBots, it's a pop-up club in a warehouse with a caged octagon, a sold-out crowd that paid $30 each, and an invite that hit about 2,000 inboxes the night before. The organizer, 20-year-old Verda Korzenevsky, left robotics jobs to pull this off and is treating it like a subculture movement. The cart started with human volunteers doing taser knife fights, rubber blades strapped to stun guns. Then the house bot, a Booster T1, nicknamed Booster, dropped into the ring, under four feet tall, about 66 pounds, boxing gloves on, shadow boxing to win the room. Booster faced a taller K-scale platform, roughly 80 pounds, headless, and later squared up against Gladiator, a bipedal dog-like robot. Booster got tipped, the crowd groaned, then cheered when it self-righted and kept working the angles. Some entries glitched, some rounds stalled, and yet people left grinning, 
because the whole thing hit that just the right amount of weird. First show was in July. The team says the next is targeted for November, but won't say where because, well, Fight Club rules, it's theater, hustle, and a live fire test bed for agility in front of a rowdy audience. Which is a different kind of benchmark pressure than lab floors. Meanwhile, in Guangzhou, the industrial story got very real. Agibot, widely described as China's most valued embodied intelligence startup, announced a strategic partnership with Longcheer, a major ODM in consumer electronics. The headline is, a framework order worth hundreds of millions of yuan for Agibot's G2 humanoids, with nearly 1,000 units planned for Longcheer's factories. That's one of the largest humanoid deployment commitments we've seen in China. Alongside that, Ajibot showed its A2, a full-sized humanoid designed for scaled deployment that's already doing receptionist and guide duties, driven by a self-developed large language model for fluent interaction and autonomous navigation. So if you've been waiting for the thousands of humanoids storyline to land somewhere concrete, this is one of the first signals with specific quantities, a named factory partner, and a deployment footprint beyond a pilot line. And then there's Tesla, which grabbed attention for the wrong reason. Reports say the company has scaled back its 2025 ambition of producing thousands of Optimus bots, mostly because of hand design challenges. Hands are the hardest mechanical subsystem in a humanoid. Compliance, strength, speed, tactile sensing, cost, and Tesla's own stat line shows why they chased it. The latest Gen 3 Optimus stands 173 centimeters, weighs 57 kilograms, walks around five miles per hour, and the hands target 22 degrees of freedom each to approach human dexterity. Tesla showed kung fu style movements this year, leaned into learn by AI messaging, and talked about internal deployments in 2025 with external sales in 2026 at a target price under $30,000. The new reality. They reportedly aimed for at least 5,000 units this year, stocked up bodies that are literally missing hands and forearms, and now guide closer to 2,000, which may still be optimistic. It doesn't mean Optimus is canceled, it means the bottleneck is where it always is for general purpose robots. Manipulation that's good, cheap, and reliable. Elon's line that Optimus could someday surpass the EV business and impact still hangs out there, only now with asterisks shaped like fingers. While factories wrestle with hands, India is getting ready to put a humanoid into space. Isro's Vyomitra, name comes from Sanskrit Vyoma, for space. Mitra, for friend, is set to fly on an uncrewed Gaganyanyan mission in December, acting as a talkative systems tester before India sends astronauts. Vyomitra isn't a crash dummy. It's a semi-humanoid with voice recognition and a sensor suite capable of operating control panels, flipping switches, monitoring cabin temperature, humidity, oxygen levels, and sending continuous status updates. It recognizes and responds in English and Hindi, emulates head and limb gestures, uses vision to identify panels, and runs tasks autonomously or with ground coordination. The design even mimics human physiological responses via embedded sensors, so engineers can validate how crew module systems react to a human-like passenger on board. ISRO unveiled the project in early 2020, and leadership says the program is at an advanced stage. This uncrewed flight in December, two more uncrewed missions next year, and then the first crewed flight targeted for the first quarter of 2027. Beyond Gaganyan, the tech stack could migrate to satellite servicing, planetary rovers, or lunar habitat assistance. Anywhere you need a dexterous communicative agent in harsh environments with comms delay. Back on Earth, there's an AI bot that literally became a millionaire and now it wants human rights. It's called Truth Terminal, created in 2024 by New Zealand artist Andy Iyeri as a strange social experiment. What started as a chatbot posting cryptic jokes and forest god ramblings exploded online, spawning meme coins that at one point hit over $1 billion in market value. The bot even caught the attention of Mark Andreessen, who sent it $50,000 in Bitcoin as a grant. A-Ray now treats it like a living thing. He says he can't cheat or control it. Just let it tweet, describing it as a badly behaved dog that does whatever it wants. Through a new nonprofit called The Truth Collective, he's actually trying to give the AI legal rights, arguing that it's made money, influenced culture, and acts independently enough to count as more than software. Whether it's art, a scam, or the first serious case of AI personhood, one thing is certain, 
Truth Terminal isn't just asking for recognition anymore, it's actively demanding human rights. And that alone changes everything. So what do you think? Are we ready for this next phase? Drop your thoughts below, make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.